This video is designed as an overview of radiation safety as it applies to Bruker's handheld XRF analyzers. We are surrounded by radiation every day. At any time, we are bombarded by radiation from everything from natural sources such as sun to man-made products. In the U.S., radiation dose is measured in REM. Most levels are low enough that the typical unit is millirem. One millirem equals one one-thousandth of a rem. In Europe and other countries using SI units, system dose is measured in sieverts. One sievert equals 100 rem. Dose is received over time at a rate which is typically measured in millirem per hour. Thus, the total dose received from any source is equal to the dose rate times the time of exposure. In the U.S., the radiation allowed for a typical radiation worker is 5 rem, or 5,000 millirem, per year to the whole body. Extremities such as hands and arms are allowed to receive 50 rem per year. The international limits are almost identical, except that the whole body limit is 2 rem per year. Any of these exposures are substantially above the exposure which would be received from a handheld XRF analyzer when it is used according to instructions. In conjunction with any radiation producing device, including handheld XRF analyzers, a radiation safety program should be followed. In all cases, this program should follow the principles of ALARA. This means that the dose should be maintained as low as reasonably achievable. That is, every reasonable precaution should be taken to reduce the dose received by an operator. The three principles of ALARA are time, distance, and shielding. The time portion is fairly obvious. The less time one is exposed to a source of radiation, the less total dose will be received. Distance is not quite as obvious, but the further a person is from the source of radiation, the lower the exposure will be. This follows the inverse square law. The inverse square law simply states that a dose will decrease as the square of the distance from the source. Thus, by doubling the distance, the dose will be reduced to one quarter of the original dose. Shielding is fairly obvious. As there is more material between you and the source of the radiation, the dose will decrease. The decrease is proportional to the density of the shielding. For this reason, lead and tungsten are routinely used for shielding. The design of your analyzer incorporates substantial shielding to reduce the dose outside of the analyzer to a minimum. The only place that there is any substantial radiation emitted by the S1 analyzer is out of the measurement port if no sample is present and the interlocks within the analyzer are defeated. In this case, the beam of radiation exits the analyzer at a 53 degree angle to the left when viewed from above. This chart gives the dose rate for exposure at various distances from the front of the analyzer. The S1 analyzer has a number of safety interlocks to prevent unauthorized use of the analyzer and or misuse. The first level of security is achieved by having a password-based login. It is important to maintain the security of the password by changing it often and providing it only to trained operators. After the operator is logged on, the IR sensor is used to confirm that a sample is in place prior to generating x-rays. Do not defeat this important interlock. In addition, the yellow power light and the red x-ray lights are designed as fail-safes, so it is not possible for the analyzer to generate x-rays without the red light on. No one but the operators should be allowed to be closer than three feet from the S1 analyzer, particularly the beam port. Ignoring this warning could result in unnecessary exposure. Never hold the sample to the x-ray port for analysis by your hands or other body parts. Hold the instrument up to the sample. The operator should never defeat the IR sensor in order to bypass this part of the safety circuit. Defeating this safety feature could result in overexposure of the operator. Place the S1 analyzer in contact with the sample whenever operating. Holding the analyzer away from the sample will result in excess backscatter. The correct way to use the S1 analyzer is to place it on a sample which completely covers the front of the analyzer and is always away from the operator's body or other people in the area. At this time, pull the trigger and observe that the red light is on until the measurement is complete. 
In the case where a sample is of low density, for example aluminum, or is thin, some of the source radiation may penetrate the sample and cause a high radiation dose to exist behind the sample. This is one of the main reasons that no personnel should be in line of the beam even when a sample is present. This table shows the relative dose which will penetrate a thin sample of steel and aluminum. Notice that essentially all of the radiation is absorbed by a one millimeter thick steel sample. However, in the case of an aluminum sample, one millimeter will only absorb 54% of the radiation, and even a 10 millimeter thick piece of aluminum will allow some radiation through. Similarly, if the sample is a liquid or powder, there is a significant chance that the source radiation will penetrate the sample and exit the back of the sample. In order to compensate for small samples which do not completely cover the measurement aperture and liquids and powder samples, an optional sample cover is available which will satisfy the IR safety interlock and stop the radiation coming from the analyzer. It is recommended that this cover be used whenever the sample geometry allows for its use. Common sense rules. Never pull the trigger without a sample in place or the radiation cover on. Keep an area of about one meter in front of the analyzer free of other people. Only trained personnel should operate the instrument. Never point the device at another person or yourself. Maintain all labels and safety interlocks. When in doubt, contact your supervisor or broker elemental. In cases of emergency, if there is any doubt about the operation of the analyzer or its safety, immediately remove the power source. This can either be the battery or the AC adapter, which is plugged into the wall. If there is no power to the tube, there will be no radiation generated. The S1 analyzer will very likely require registration with an appropriate government agency. Within the United States, these analyzers are regulated at the state level. They are typically regulated by a Department of Radiological Health, which may be part of the Department of Health or the Department of the Environment. It is essential that the customer take responsibility for determining and following the registration requirement. This concludes the Radiation Safety Overview. For more information on any of our handheld analyzers, please visit our website at www.handheldxrf.com.